In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Quiet Carry Drift. And at the end, I'm going to tell you why you should or shouldn't buy it. Hey everyone, it's Wes Newman with The Pocket Perspective. Welcome back. And if you're new here, this channel focuses on reviews and how-tos of EDC gear, knives, flashlights, things like that. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Quiet Carry Drift. I'm gonna go over the specs, followed by the design and build quality. I'll weave my experiences of the knife throughout, finish with a quick summary, then tell you why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. So with that, let's jump into the specs. This is what I would consider a medium sized knife. It's uh, following the three, four, seven ratio that I talk about sometimes. Blade length is just under three inches at 2.98 inches, 76 millimeters. Closed length is 3.94 inches or 100 millimeters. And the overall is 6.94 inches or 176 millimeters. Handle thickness is pretty thin on this. It's uh, 0.37 inches or 9.4 millimeters. And blade thickness is uh, what I would consider thin. It's a uh, 0.09 inch uh, blade stock or 2.3 millimeters. Weight on this guy is reported to be 2.6 ounces or 73.7 grams. Looks like we're just over that 77 grams and 2.73 ounces. This is what I would consider a drop point style blade and it is flat ground. It's not full flat ground. You can see there's a bit of a flat there at the top. The steel on this is Vanax and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that a little later on. The handles are titanium. This is a frame lock. The clip is right side tip up only. And uh, this is manufactured, uh, I, I, it was kind of hard to find, um, I think, a lot of it's manufactured in Taiwan, and then the heat treat on the steel is in the US. It didn't exactly say on their website, and so I think it's manufactured in a few different places. Price on this one is uh, $305. There are a couple of different variants. And then behind the edge thickness. Looks like we're coming in right about 20 thousandths right there. So it's definitely gonna be pretty slicey uh, with uh, 90 thousandths um, uh, um, stock and uh, 20 thousandths um, uh, secondary uh, bevel there behind the edge. And uh, so those are your specs. Let's take a minute and compare the drift to a few other knife models. Starting off with the PM2, which is quite a bit larger knife. Uh, blade length is longer and overall length is quite a bit uh, longer. And so let's uh, bring in the Para 3. The Para 3 blade length is almost exactly the same, uh, both cutting edge and then uh, full full blade length. Uh, the handle length is, is quite a bit larger on the Para 3. Uh, both the Para 3 and Para 2s, uh, really the, the blade to handle ratio is not very good on them, although they're very ergonomic and, and nice to use. Third one I wanna bring in is the Native Salt, which is a very comparable knife. Um, both blade length and overall lengths are very similar. There you can see, if I line them up, cutting edge and overall blade length is almost exactly the same. And then the Native is just a little bit longer than the, um, than the Drift. Uh, they both have uh, front finger choils. They both have this um, scalloped area here and um, I think they look very similar, although the um, native has a hole and the uh, drift is utilizing a uh, thumb stud. And those are your comparisons. Moving on to the design of the knife, Quiet Carry designs knives and other EDC gear that is very clean and practical. And if you watched any of my videos, you know uh, that I love practical knives and just practical gear in general. I like very clean aesthetics and the drift uh, really does uh, have nice aesthetics. Um, the, they have several different lines of knives. Uh, this one is part of the elements line, which focuses on high corrosion resistance. Uh, they're using Vanax steel in this one. They also have other knives that are using LC 200 N. Um, all of the components are highly corrosion resistance, uh, titanium scales, titanium hardware, 
um, has uh, bronze phosphorus um, washers, uh, ceramic detent, and then um, the the clip is uh, is uh, some sort of uh, high corrosion stainless steel, probably 304 or something like that. Uh, um, and they have several other uh, knives in that line as well, uh, but. Uh, the Drift is the one that appeals to me the most. And uh, they just came back in stock in the last month. And so I went ahead and picked one up. They have several different variants. Um, this one is uh, the one with the knurled finish. They have um, a stone washed finish. You can see there the back is stone washed. So they have ones that are stone washed um, on the front as well. And then you can pick the different finish. This is a, a like a satin belt finish. They also have a stone washed finish. And then it uh, looks like they're coming out with some G10 uh, liner lock models as well. And so those are going to be uh, have a, a little bit lower price point, but they're still using Vanax steel. So again, aesthetically, uh, this knife really appeals to me. It's got some nice curves. It, I mean, it really reminds me of the native um, just due to the front finger choil here and uh, the, the, the finger grooves here. Nice uh, arched uh, back here. Um, it's very comfortable to use. Um, so aesthetically, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice looking, both open and closed. And you know that uh, I like the uh, clean look, both open and closed. And so that they've done a good job with that. Um, the blade on this is a uh, drop point style blade and it's, uh, it's flat ground. It's not full flat ground, uh, but uh, it, is, uh, it is almost uh, full flat. And uh, you know, it does have a thumb stud opening there and you can see there it's uh, looks like the thumb stud is uh, removable. So if you wanted to completely disassemble this and anodize it, um, it probably wouldn't be a problem. I will be anodizing this one very soon. And so I'll be doing a full disassembly. Uh, the uh, it has it has some uh, um, jimping here on the spine and, I, you know, along just as 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 I, I mentioned on many other knives, um, the jimping's just not far enough forward. I, I don't get it. Uh, like, uh, I guess these 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 people who are designing knives think that people are just gonna have their thumb like in this position here where it really needs to be more like this. And I've got, you know, small, medium hands. And so it really, you know, jimping just misses the mark on almost every single knife <laughs> that I handle. I mean, it's not terrible, but uh, I really wish it was farther forward. Uh, this jumping is not aggressive at all. Um, you know, it, it does catch my thumb a little bit, but uh, it's it's definitely, I would like to see it just a little more aggressive. And I think part of the problem is, you know, it's just on really thin blade stock, which I love thin blade stock on an EDC knife. Um, it just, it makes slicing through things, uh, you know, just a pleasure. So uh, I know a lot of people, you know, prefer thicker blade stock and want, you know, a burly knife, but if it's something, that I'm looking to carry that's very slimline and I'm just doing, you know, typical um, urban chores with it, EDC stuff. Uh, you know, I'm going to grab something with with thinner blade stock um, like the TRM Atom. It's got 90,000 blade stock and I absolutely uh, love it. Um, so the, the you can see the markings there uh, it says quiet carry on one side and then Vanax on the other. And so this is using uh, Vanax Super Clean Steel. There's not a whole lot of production knives out there that are using Vanax. Uh, from what I understand, it's it's kind of harder to source and it's it's pretty expensive. And so uh, a little bit of background on Vanax. And I haven't, this is my first knife with Vanax and so I haven't been able to really use it a whole lot. And so a lot of this is just uh, me reading up on it, but it is, Essentially, it's a it's a nitrogen enriched uh, powder steel that is very uh, high corrosion resistance, uh, uh, has good edge retention and toughness. You know, a lot of people tout it as like the full Goldilocks steel. You know, I, I'm going to reserve my opinion on that until until I get to use it some more. Um, looking at uh, um, Dr. Thomas's um, couple articles on this, um, you know, it's it's it is good steel. But looks like the edge retention and toughness is around S35VN. You know, the, the corrosion resistance is, is way up there, um, you know, very similar to LC200N. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as good as like H1. Um, and it's not going to be as good as uh, like a 304 stainless either. 
um, but it is definitely high corrosion resistance and so you're gonna probably have a really hard time getting this to to um, rust at all unless um, you know you left it in some sort of uh, chemical bath um, so you know uh, my opinion's still out on this steel um, you know it's it's really I think that's what's driven up the cost of this so high um, in my opinion uh, I probably would have preferred to see this in LC200N and the the price of the knife dropped considerably, but I'm happy to be able to get one and, and use it and test out some Van X finally. So um, yeah, uh, so that's a little bit about um, the blade steel. I'll leave those uh, links to those couple articles uh, down in the description. The action on this knife, um, it's pretty good. It is running on bronze phosphorus washers and it drops uh, to the half position there. You definitely have to close it all the way, um, but it's not running on bearings. Um, and it's, you know, it's a fairly uh, light blade. So, um, you know, if it was a little heavier blade, it may want to drop all the way shut. Uh, but uh, overall, the action is good on it and uh, it's easy to deploy and it's very smooth. And, you know, I would definitely prefer bronze phosphorus washers in something, you know, focused on corrosion resistance, um, you know, bearings, if you get them dirty, uh, you know, the action can really gum up and become difficult and gritty to use. So, uh, yeah, I think they made the right decision uh, on using uh, washers in this knife. As I mentioned, this is a frame lock. It has a lock bar insert made of LC200N steel and it uh, also has an over travel stop you can see there uh, it has uh, two screws there uh, a lot of times you only see uh, one screw holding in the uh, um, the insert and the handles uh, you know are obviously titanium there it has a bit of a lanyard um, hole loop um, it's just on one side you can see there um, the the front side has this nice knurling get a close-up shot of that uh, it's not super aggressive. Um, it's just right in my opinion. I really like the knurling on this side. And it's got a couple of uh, four holes there, I believe. Um, I mean, four uh, dimples. I believe some of their other knives have this as well. The um, I like the, um, the flush hardware too on the show side. I think it looks really nice. And you can see there the, the screws on the other side. Everything on this is a T8, which um, I really appreciate. And, um, I, you know, back to the lanyard hole, I would have preferred to seen, you know, like a lane, like a pin back here instead of, uh, instead of the hole here. Uh, but, uh, I am glad that it's not on the show side. Um, but that's, you know, personal preference. I'm not a big lanyard guy. Um, but I would have preferred to see that completely gone. And then, you know, just a pin back here in the backspacer and, you know, have a really subdued, uh, loop there. And there you can see that. Uh, everything is completely flush on the hardware and the whole knife is very slim and uh, I, I really really do uh, like this um, and the ergos on it are really good you can see there it has a front finger choil uh, multiple um, grip positions I've got small medium hands I've got a half a finger left there and if I choke up on it I've got tons of room back here um, you know it's really quite a comfortable knife and um, it's it's also really nice to carry. Uh, you know, it's not very uh, heavy being all titanium, 2.6 ounces, you know, so it's under that ounce per inch mark. And if we take a look at the clip here, you can see that it is a full deep carry clip and um, it, it really does carry nice in the pocket. It being so thin and uh, having a deep carry wire clip. Wire clips are some of my favorite. I know a lot of people, you know, you either like them or you don't. Uh, I, I actually really do like them on more utilitarian style knives. And so with that, let me show you what it looks like in my pocket. So the knife goes in and out of the pocket super easy. Wire clips uh, typically uh, are easy to get inside of the pocket. And this one sinks all the way in. You can see uh, really there's not a whole lot showing there. Um, the clip is uh, pretty unobtrusive and it's easy to get your hand in and out of your pocket. Uh, no flipper tab or anything to catch your pinky on. And it's, it's really nice and slender. So this is really nice to carry. Um, I carried this one inside of my waistband on, on some shorts uh, and it was comfortable. I carried the uh, knurling up against my bare skin to see if that would bother me and it really didn't. Um, so 
Uh, you know, this is definitely, obviously it's meant for the elements and it's, you know, it's a knife I wouldn't uh, hesitate to like carry in my swimsuit or, you know, just on the inside of a pair of shorts, um, you know, if I'm doing any type of wet weather activity, canoeing or something like that or fishing. Uh, so the carry on this knife is, is really uh, good. So I really enjoyed carrying this knife around. Moving on to the build quality. Uh, the grinds on this knife uh, look really good here. You can see that the plunge lines are uh, nice and even. They come to the same spot. You know, the, the, um, the satin finish is really nice on this. The markings are nice and crisp and dark, easy to read. You can see there that the um, the corners are chamfered over right here. Um, my preference may have been um, to have these like fully rounded. Um, I do like that on knives, but uh, really this, this, these are nice and comfortable as well. Um, and you can see there um, that the titanium is also nicely finished and chamfered all the way around. Get a close up of the knurling again. You can see they did a good job on it. There's no stray milling marks or anything. The heads of these screws are nicely finished. Same with the pivot. Stonewash on the back looks really good as well. I really like the, the stonewashing they've done. A lot of times uh, when you stonewash titanium, it just gets so dull looking. And so this, this looks really nice. And then the centering is right where it should be, hard to get in there. And then lock up, it's about 50%, so no problems there. Sharpening is good, so I can get it in here. It's definitely nice and sharp. It's not, it's not all the way perfect, um, meaning that it's not um, even all the way from from tip to heel but it's pretty close so it's it's good it's definitely um they definitely did a good job and it's definitely sharp so overall um the build quality is definitely really nice they did a good job on this let's take a minute and rockwell test the blade while i've got this apart i thought i'd show you a little bit about the inside there log bar insert has the the steel labeled on it which is kind of cool I've got some speed holes here milled into it as well. Both sides there, you can see. All right. So onto the test here. Uh, Vanex, um, it's not a high hardness steel. I think uh, it can get up to like 61 max. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess this one's probably in the 58 to 59 territory, um, but we'll see set up and apply the preload reset the scale apply the 150 kilogram force Bring it back. And there we go. So it looks like we're 57. So I was close. There we go. So yeah, 57. All right. Again, you know, I think 61 is like super high hard hardness for this or, or at the very top of the scale. So uh, would have been nice to see this just a little bit harder, um, 58, 59, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So 57 on, on this uh, drift. In summary, I think the drift is a great knife. It really appeals to my practical side. I love the choice of materials. Um, you know, again, uh, my opinion's uh, still out on uh, Vanax, so I look forward to continuing to use this, see what type of edge retention I get. Uh, you know, I think this is a perfect choice for taking on adventures or if you're 
uh, work in rust prone areas or possibly you know work uh, on the ocean or a boat and need something that is going to be uh, pretty much impervious to uh, salt water this is obviously a fantastic choice i do think it's a bit pricey uh, for what it is um, you know most likely due to the vanex and so uh, I would really like to see them replace the Vanax with LC200N or have an option there and uh, drive the price of this uh, knife down. But uh, this is a knife that I could definitely recommend to others. Moving on to why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. You should buy the knife if you're looking for something with a sub three inch blade. You should buy the knife if you're looking for something with Vanax steel. And finally, you should buy it if you want something that is highly corrosion resistant. And why you shouldn't buy it. You shouldn't buy the knife if you don't like thin blades. You shouldn't buy it if you're on a budget. I think the Native 5 Salt would be a much more budget friendly option. And finally, you shouldn't buy it if you want something made in the US. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the Drift or Vanex Steel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day.